Since the end of the 19th century, the second phase of industrialization has stimulated manufacturing production. In North America, the end of the 1930s depression and a post-war economic prosperity brought a new hope for a better future. That new reality, and a consequent baby boom after soldiers came home and wanted to start new and larger families, propelled an overall consumption of goods and services, as well as the pursuit of leisure activities. Consumption equaled happiness, providing baby boomers with unprecedented material comfort. Families had more money and improved access to credit, which they spent on material goods, but also on homes. And the bungalow was the popular style. People began to move into the suburbs. Quebecers were no exception. They also participated in this new consumer society, which was characterized by an increase of available goods that were often superfluous or unnecessary. After the frugal and thrifty days of World War II, goods no one could afford were now becoming more common. Televisions themselves were quite new and were quickly growing in popularity, and TVs were a great way to advertise those other products and to promote a certain lifestyle. From the bungalow in the suburbs to the shiny new automobile parked out front. From the latest electric washing machine to the most modern of refrigerators, Canadians saw what they wanted and wanted what they saw, at first on the American channels from the border stations, but soon from our own channels in Canada. In 1957, 44 TV stations broadcast across the country, and 3 million TV sets were in our living rooms. Hollywood dreams entered the Canadian psyche through popular TV shows like Leave it to Beaver, or Bonanza, or The Ed Sullivan Show. And for many, though certainly not for all, living this dream was at least partly achievable. Personal income grew steadily through the 50s and 60s, and even the average Quebecer could afford many of the new luxuries portrayed and advertised on television. Travel to the U.S. and other destinations in Canada was also promoted. One could even escape from our cold winters into this new world of warmth and comfort. And it wasn't just about this new consumerism or a higher standard of living. These changes and freedoms illustrated a particularly American way of life. And what that meant was American culture was also part and parcel of that life. One element that leaked over from American media sources along the borders was music. Rock and roll took off in the 1950s with musicians like Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and Jerry Lee Lewis leading the way. Pop standards by crooners like Dean Martin and Tony Bennett remained popular. The 1960s launched the psychedelic era with alternative and more popular music styles all arriving over the radio but also on television series directed at a new, younger generation. That younger generation was prominent as listeners of music, as watchers of television, but also as a new consumer demographic. Department stores began to notice a lot of young adults in their stores. They even created new product lines tailored to them. In many ways, the very idea of the typical Canadian teenager was in fact an American invention. And advertisers were now specifically targeting those youth. They were consumers of food, music, and fashion. And they influenced how their parents spent their dollars as well. At first, as materialist and conformist as their parents, eventually by the 60s, they became exciting and youthful trendsetters that marketing campaigns like those from Pepsi met head-on, meeting youth culture where it was. While their parents had bought new appliances, cars and homes in the early post-war years, by the 1960s, non-durable goods and services amounted to much of what families, including youth, were purchasing. New gadgets and new songs and the new TV shows and lifestyle ads that displayed them. And people bought into the way the ads were designed as well, Everything was the newest, or the slimmest, or may be made of the best steel and most flexible steel in the world. And not only that, 
Sexual images in advertising were becoming very common after the war, and advertisers began trying something new, something to stimulate the brain in a different way. So what do you think? Were the generations of the 1950s and 60s different from previous generations? Are they different from now? Are we too American for our own good? 